wise person once said that magic lies beyond the lens of a microscope. And that wise person was me. <laughs> now, when I say the word microscope, some of you may have a simplistic image that comes to your mind of something that looks like this. But what I'm talking about today is an electron microscope, which actually looks something like this. And what's special about the electron microscope is that it's run by electrons instead of light. So let's take an example. This is an image of a little piece of a flooring tile captured with a light microscope. And we can see that while light can give us colors, electrons have much smaller wavelengths. So they don't see colors, but what they see is very stark surface detail, something that looks like this. I work as an electron microscopist, and I love my job, because every day I get to discover something new and cool. And just like that, I have discovered what I like to call Jayanti's three laws of everything seen under the electron microscope. My first law, everything is interesting, even the ordinary things, especially the ordinary things. In August 2018, I saw an ad open for a contest called the Science in Focus Contest. This is a contest for aesthetic images of scientific value. Back then, I was a procrastinating PhD student. <laughs> so, obviously, I decided to, to set all my time from my important experiments aside and started spending all my time beautifying my electron microscopy images. <laughs> the contest allowed for three entries. And I had two very cool ones on my mind. These two fancy, sciencey images of blood cells inside blood clots. And for the third one, I didn't have anything particularly interesting on my mind. So I decided to go with this image. I was a dental student in some sort of a past life. So I found this very cool, because this is a strand of dental floss. Now, I didn't think anybody else would find it particularly interesting, but it was such an easy image to fill some colors in. And I could make my dental floss whatever color I wanted. So creative freedom one, I colored the image, and I hit submit. One month later, when the results were announced, you know which image it was that won. It wasn't the sciencey images, but it was the image of the strand of floss. And this baffled me so much that I actually walked up to one of the judges and I asked them, why was it that this image made, it the, made the cut among so many other sciencey images? And their answer was so simple. They said it was because it was looking at an everyday object under the microscope to see how different it looks. It was extraordinary. Just like that, one day, not just microscopists, but researchers, dentists, doctors, engineers may find what they do to be mundane and ordinary. But fill in some colors. Share the story of your work with someone, and they might just find the extraordinary in your ordinary. Now comes my second law. Everything is beautiful, even disgusting and yucky things like dust and bacteria. Because that is what dust looks like under the microscope. But hang on, it's not ordinary dust, because why would I put ordinary dust under a microscope? It's special dust. It's a material called fly ash, which is often used in engineering applications. And maybe it doesn't look very beautiful to you, but let me zoom in. Now, and now, and now. Let's have a look at some bacteria. 
That's what bacteria looks like. And let's zoom into it. What do you think? Beyond graphs and equations and the things that are considered to be typically boring lies the visual of science that microscopy offers. And we can see that when we zoom in enough, the things that we consider typically disgusting or yucky actually have the potential to make it to art galleries. Which brings me to my third law. Everything becomes valuable when science meets art. I have a dear friend called Mumu. Mumu was a procrastinating PhD student just like me. One day, she decided to embark on her own journey of procrastination. She took one of her electron microscopy images, this image, which is an image of some tiny components of a single bone cell. She decided to get creative with it, and she filled in some colors of the theme of Van Gogh's Starry Night. And the outcome looked something like this. She called this image the tiny universe. Just like stars in the galaxy, a little universe within every cell of our body. And just like that, I've got all of you interested in what's inside a bone cell. And this is something you would have never thought of unless you decided to go down a rabbit hole of some lengthy academic works. So very cool images, very cool stories of me and my friend Mumu. But surely, Mumu and I aren't the only microscopy science nerds trying to digress our way into the arts. <laughs> so let me introduce you to the very first microscopy nerd who was trying to make it as an artist. His name was Robert Hooke, and he lived in the 17th century. And back then, there was no Photoshop, unfortunately. So he had to illustrate everything that he saw under the microscope with his hand. He took all of these illustrations and he compiled it into a book, which he called Micrographia. Not Microscopia, Micrographia, which means he was referring to not the science, but the art that he had derived from the science of his observations under the microscope. So now we know that microscopy science nerds have been existing from the 17th century up until the 21st century. But that made me think, what about people from the arts or creative backgrounds? What did they think of the visual of microscopy? So I decided to have a chat with a colleague, Anastasia. Anastasia is a senior lecturer at the QUT Faculty of Creative Industries. And she's diving deep in the subject that I'm really interested in, in the subject of visual communication. What she found through her work of placing scientific imagery in an artistic setting was that certain images made with an electron microscope can have aesthetic value apart from scientific documentation. Let's see an example. This is an image of an evaporated droplet of water captured by an electron microscope and transformed by Anastasia's creativity. Now, without making a quick judgment of how much of this is science or art, let's look at it for what it really is. It's a tool for public engagement. We may think that science and art are too far apart to meet, but weave them in together and it forms the very thread that connects the scientists and the non-scientists. Learning is at its best when we are curious and our emotions are engaged. And this learning is very important because every day, non-scientists must make many decisions about choosing to use scientific innovations. Should I get the vaccine? Should I have that probiotic drink? Should I get the black face wash with charcoal in it? 
and therefore the visual of science that microscopy offers can have a bigger impact than we can imagine. You may not have access to an electron microscope, but what I urge you to do is look around you. Look at the science and research happening around you. Because every boring, mundane, ordinary thing has something extraordinary to it. Every disgusting, yucky thing has something beautiful to it. And we all have a curious scientist and a we, have, we all have a curious scientist and a magical artist within us. All we need to do is turn on the electron microscope within our minds and let the magic unfold.